Good day everyone, welcome to our sixth topic on the series of video lectures and the reg regulatory firm framework and the topic um, in this video will be Republic Act 3591 or the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation or PDIC law. Right. So PDIC or the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation Okay, this is a government instrumentality that was created in 1963 by virtue of Republic Act 3591. The purpose of the PDIC um, is basically to ensure um, deposits of all banks uh, which are entitled to the benefits of insurance, right? The latest amendment to this particular law creating PDIC um, are contained in Republic Act 9576, which was signed into law on April 29, 2009. This new law increased the maximum deposit insurance coverage to 500,000 pesos. This new law also includes important provisions to ensure that the PDIC shall remain financially and institutionally strong to fulfill its mandate under its charter. What is this mandate? Well, we will discuss later on. The PDIC under this amending law now has the authority to determine which deposit products will now be covered by insurance and authorized to conduct independent special examination of banks and now may inquire into or examine deposit accounts of ailing banks in the event that there is a finding of unsafe and unsound banking practices. Also part of the financial strengthening measures for the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation include exemption from taxes and the authority to issue sovereign bonds, debentures, and other debt issuances. Now, being a government instrumentality, the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation is at an attached agency of the Department of Finance. Unlike the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, which is the chief monetary agency of the country and is an uh, administratively and um, fiscally aut autonomous, um, the PDIC is an attached agency of the Department of Finance. So basically, they are answerable. The PDIC is answerable to the Secretary of Finance. Now, let's discuss now the overall mandate of the PDIC. Well, the PDIC exists to provide permanent and continuing deposit insurance coverage for the depositing public to help promote public confidence and stability in the economy. We've mentioned a while ago that the maximum insurance coverage now for deposits in the Philippines is 500,000 pesos. It means that when a bank when a bank got busted or will uh, go into insolvency proceedings and will no longer capable of uh, fulfilling the deposit liabilities to its depositors, the depositors are entitled to a maximum amount of five hundred thousand pesos because this amount is insured uh, by the PDIC. Also, the PDIC ensures prompt payment of insured deposits exercises complementary supervision of banks, adopts responsive resolution methods, and applies efficient management of receivership and liquidation functions. Now, this is the overall mandate of the PDIC. Basically, it aids into the promotion of public confidence in the banking industry that in turn leads to um, the promotion of, of economic stability in the Philippines. Because while bank secrecy, as we've discussed in our previous video, encourages people to put into their, their money into banks because, again, uh, they will not be inquired or examined, albeit um, under narrow exemptions, but generally it will not be subject to um, examinations, people are, are, are still fearsome of putting their money in banks because um, there are several instances in the, in the history of, of banking in the Philippines that banks go bankrupt and people are left with nothing. They are left without recourse um, of, of, of recovery of the deposits they made with the bank. So with the PDIC, by minimum, 
ba uh, by by minimum uh, huge depositors meaning those account holders with massive deposits are now insured with a minimum amount at least they're gonna get something while other bank depositors are insured in a way that their deposits are covered by uh, by uh, by the insurance meaning at least if a bank will say go bankrupt or becomes insolvent or no longer capable of meeting the deposit demands or the, the the withdrawal demands at least an agency will come in and will provide now for that needed um recovered amount or amount recoverable which is 500,000 in maximum all right also because of the PDIC um the, the the insurance that PDIC promotes is actually complementary towards uh, banking operations, okay? And the prompt payment of insured deposits, the exercise complementary supervision of banks, um, uh, as well as adoption of responsive resolution methods, as well as ensuring that um, banks will not engage in an, an sound and, and safe banking practices, right? Now, Let's proceed to the functions of the PDIC. The first function, obviously, which is um, in line with its overall mandate, is to serve as a deposit insurer. The PDIC is also a co-regulator of banks together with the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. And the PDIC also serves as the receiver and liquidator of closed banks. Okay? Now, the maximum de deposit insurance coverage or MDIC. Effective June 1, 2009, the PDIC shall pay deposit insurance on all valid deposits up, up to the maximum deposit insurance coverage or MDIC of 500,000 pesos per depositor of a closed bank. Accounts maintained in the same right and capacity for a depositor's benefit, whether in his own name or in the name of others, are covered by deposit insurance. Now, deposits are considered valid upon termination by the PDIC, ba determination by the PDIC based on bank records that deposits were made with a corresponding inflow of cash, meaning um, they fall under the regular definition of deposits. Now, note that under Republic Act No. Um, 9576, the PDIC may propose adjustments to the MDIC, the Maximum Deposit Insurance Coverage. However, this proposal shall be, shall be subject to the approval of the President of the Philippines. In case of a condition that threatens the monetary and financial stability of the banking system that may have systematic consequences. So meaning this 500,000 can be increased later on. But this increase of the MDIC shall be subject to the approval of the President of the Philippines. While the provision of the law is silent as to this particular adjustment um, will in contemplate increased or decreased of this maximum dep deposit insurance coverage at the rate of um, in, of say um, inflation in the Philippines, obviously it would be um, highly impossible that the MDIC shall be decreased from five hundred thousand. Because again, again the, the the adjustment made here would probably account already the um, inflation adjustment for the for the insurance or the fixed amount of insured. Um, insurance that um, provided originally under the um, previous law. So this particular um, adjustment might have already contemplated um, inflation. So highly improbable or highly, impos highly impossible that um, the MDIC will be reduced in the near future. Chances are it will be increased. Okay? Now, for for. The insurance coverage under the PDIC, this will now cover member banks. The member banks include institutions authorized by the BSP or the Banco Central ng Pilipinas to perform banking functions. Banks incorporated under Philippine laws such as commercial banks, saving ba savings banks, mortgage banks, development banks, rural banks, cooperative banks, and stock savings and loan associations, they fall under the member banks covered by the PDIC. Also covered by the PDIC are domestic branches of foreign banks operating in the Philippines. Now, 
let's discuss insured deposit. The term under this particular law, insured deposit, means the amount due to any bona fide depositor for legitimate deposits in an insurance, insured bank, net of any obligation of the depositor to the insured bank as of the date of closure, but not to exceed 500,000 pesos. So here, um, any amount that are bona fide um, entitled to be uh, entitlement of a particular depositor or account holder uh, will be covered by the PDIC insurance but not to exceed 500,000 pesos. A joint account shall be insured separately from any individually owned deposit account. Okay? Now, what are the classification of insured, uh, insured deposits? By deposit type, um, this will include savings, special savings, demand and checking account, and negotiable order of withdrawal or now certificate of time deposits. By deposit account, um, insured deposits may be classified in, um, into single accounts, joint accounts, accounts by, in trust for ITF, or for the account of FAO of another person. Right? And for by currency, this insured deposits could be Philippine peso or foreign currencies considered as part of the Banco Central na Pilipinas International Reserves. Note class and for joint accounts, it shall be insured separately from any individually owned deposit account. So for example, if this joint account worth 2 million divided by the um, uh, 2, kasi nga hati ito joint account, so each um, account holder will be entitled to 1 million and then the maximum um, insurance for each deposit is 500,000. So one co-depositor um, will be insured for 500,000 kasi may 1 million siya na siya, right? And then the other one will be entitled for 500,000 because nga meron siyang 1 million uh, amount for that particular joint account. So each of them will be insured for 500,000. As opposed to a single account na, for example, same amount, 2 million yung kanyang uh, total deposit sa bank, pero single account siya, so the insurance will be up to 500,000 only. As opposed to a joint account na same balance na 2 million, pero joint account man, dalawa sila, so each of them will be entitled to 500,000. Right? So better off yung joint account, if manotest niyo with respect to the insurance, kasi each of them will be entitled to 500,000. Right? Now, let's proceed to are all banks members of the PDIC. Well, membership of banks to the PDIC is mandatory. Hence, all operating banks in the Philippines are members of the PDIC. Well, how about foreign banks? Obviously, they have to have domestic banks operating here as branches, domestic branches. So, these domestic branches operating in the Philippines, it presupposes that for them to operate in the Philippines, they have to be registered or they have to uh, secure membership with the PDIC. Otherwise, how come they were able to operate in the Philippines? So, and every bank in the Philippines operating right now um, are members of the PDIC as, it, as membership is mandatory. Now, the PDIC law as defined deposits and deposits here by definition under Section 3, Paragraph F of Republic Act 3591 as amended by Section 2 of Republic Act 9576 refers to unpaid balance of money or its equivalent received by a bank in the usual course of business and for which it was given or is obliged to give credit to a commercial checking savings time or thrift account or issued in accordance with Banco Central rules and regulations and other applicable laws together with such other obligations of the bank which consistent with banking usage and practices. The board of directors shall determine and prescribe by regulations to be deposit liabilities of the bank provided that any obligation of the bank which is payable at the office of the bank located outside of the Philippines shall not be a deposit for any of the purposes of this act are included as part of the total deposits or of insured deposit provided further that subject to the approval of the board of directors any insured bank which is incorporated under the laws of the philippines which maintains a branch outside the philippines may elect to include for insurance its deposit obligations payable only at such branch 
Right? So take note of this. What is contemplated under PDIC of the term deposit, yung unpaid balance na lang. With the time of closure of the particular bank, yung total, total amount at that particular period that is to be given uh, to the depositor or that has yet been given. Meaning, hindi pa na-release yung balance na yan. Alright? Now, um, it shall pay, be payable at the office of the bank uh, if if any of the obligation of the bank payable at the office of the bank located outside of the Philippines shall not be considered deposit. However, if the board of directors approve to it, the branch of a Philippine bank operating outside of the Philippines may insure itself or may insure uh, its deposits um, if they if the board of directors decide to um, include them. But this particular um, um, definition of deposit may only include those obligations that are payable of that particular branch. So this particular insurance now of a foreign branch of the Philippine Bank is not collective but rather specific branch insurance. Again, provided that the board of directors of such bank approves that particular inclusion. All right? Um... Two types of deposits are insured by the PDIC. Well, except for the exclusion stipulated in Republic Act 9576, deposits of all commercial banks, savings and mortgage banks, rural banks, private development banks, cooperative banks, savings and loan associations, as well as branches and agencies in the Philippines of foreign banks, and all other corporations that are authorized to perform banking functions in the Philippines, are insured with the PDIC. As for Philippine banks with branches outside the country, Republic Act 9576 st stipulates that subject to the approval of the Board of Directors, any insured bank with branch outside the Philippines may elect to include in their insurance its deposit obligations but payable only by such branch. Note that foreign currency deposits are also insured by PDIC pursuant to Republic Act 6426, otherwise known as an act instituting a foreign currency deposit system in the Philippines and for other purposes. The, and the central bank, uh, or circular, number 1389. So ito yung mga provision that includes foreign currency deposits under the insurance coverage of the PDIC. Depositors may receive payment in the same currency in which the insured deposit is dominated. So meaning if it is, is in dollar, um, the depositor may receive the insured amount under the dollar currency because this is the currency to which the deposit was denominated. However, that will be the dollar equivalent of the maximum dep deposit insurance coverage or MDIC which is 500,000 pesos. Okay? Let's proceed to those not covered by the PDIC deposit insurance. So, ano ano itong mga hindi included sa deposit insurance ng PDIC? Well, under Section 4, Paragraph E, uh, Paragraph F of the PDIC law, uh, whether denominated, documented, recorded, or booked as deposit by the bank, the following are excluded from the PDIC deposit insurance. First, investment products such as bonds and securities, trust accounts and other similar instruments, deposit accounts or transactions that are unfunded, fictitious, or fraudulent, or those that constitute or emanate from unsafe and unsound banking practices, as determined by the PDIC in consultation with the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, after due notice and hearing and publication of PDIC ceased and deceased order against such deposit accounts or transactions, and those deposit accounts or transactions determined to be proceeds of an unlawful activity as defined under the AMLA or Republic Act 9160. So again, if this is a particular deposit found to be um, uh, an actual bank account used in um, kidnapping or say in terror activities or in support of terror terrorists, these will not be covered by the insurance when the bank uh, go go busted or when the bank will be um, deemed insolvent, right?
So, let's go to frequently asked questions. What are the specific risks to a bank does PDIC cover? PDIC covers only the risk of a bank closure ordered by the monetary board. The, thus, if the bank uh, losses due to theft, fire, closure by reason of strike or existence of public disorder, or there is a revolution or a civil war, these are not covered by the PDIC. So the only cover, the only event that the PDIC ensures is when depositors are no longer um, can no longer receive money from their banks if the bank was ordered by the monetary board of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas closed. So any other grounds of incapability of the bank to make good of the deposit obligations are not covered by the insurance of the PDIC. Second, can, the, can PDIC insurance coverage be increased by having several accounts in the same name in an insured bank? No. Deposit insurance coverage is not determined per an account basis, but rather the type of account, whether checking, savings, time, or other form of deposit has in fact no bearing on the amount of insurance coverage. It means that the insurance coverage will be on the person itself, no matter how much is the total amount paid or, or, or deposited by that person in that particular bank, that person is only insured up to the maximum of the MDI, MDIC. Now, if the deposit account in a closed bank is more than 500000 what happens to the excess of the maximum amount of insured, insured deposit? If the closed bank is not rehabilitated or taken over by another bank um, amount in excess of 500000 Coverage can still be claimed upon the final liquidation of the remaining assets of the um, closed bank. The claim may be filed with the liquidator of the closed bank, but payment of the said claim will depend on the bank's available assets to settle its preferred claims. So, meron kasi tayong hierarchy of claims, right, under our um, 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 credits law. Um, we have this hierarchy of claims. First will be government taxes and then labor uh, claims. Those are pen, uh, outstanding obligations to laborers or workers or even to employees and then secured credits and then trust funds. And the approval of the liquidation court. The schedule of payment beyond 500000 of the maximum deposit insurance coverage shall be based on the priorities set by law. But take note that more than 500000 will be determined by the liquidator of the closed bank and determination uh, on the bank's available assets to settle it, all its claims arranged by preference. Right? Kasi meron yan siyang hierarchy. Unang-una dyan yung outstanding taxes and obligations with the government. Second will be the labor claims. Ito yung mga preferred talaga na before everyone will be paid, they have to be settled first. Right? end of our sixth topic um watch out for the succeeding videos of our um uh, additional topics that are not yet uh, discussed um we will continue in the coming days thank you